Welcome back, guys. Bernard Crossover, Mark and Mark here, your host for tonight. And over here, guys, we got some returning guests just for this segment. It's going to talk a little bit about the NBA. Introduce yourself, guys. Yeah, my name's Nelly. I'm Rico. Awesome. First time? Yeah, yeah. first time. Welcome yeah. to Pinoy Crossover. I know Nelly, we've had him a couple of times here. Uh, he enjoyed it and we've had some good discussions, so we might not bring him back. Mm -hmm. JR, let's go to some NBA topics. What's up in the NBA? Yeah, man, there's a lot of things that happen in the NBA as, again. Oh, I mean, there's, the stories don't stop. But there are some rumblings within the Lakers uh, a team. You know, there's been uh, some a few rumors between LeBron James and uh, Coach Luke Walton, but what one thing I want to focus on is because of the Washington Wizards situation, about how the backcourt has been, you know, uh, in Tusk right now. Mm -hmm. But what were your thoughts about having maybe a Bradley Beal tra trade, which could could happen, or maybe even happen towards trading to the Lakers? Well, for me personally, I don't think they should make a trade mm -hmm. um, to the Lakers. I because th Michael uh, Patrick Johnson came out saying that it's a two-year plan, right? So if you add Bradley Beal, is it going to change much? Like, they're in seventh place right now, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, like, you, you add him, you have to give up some pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Wizards got to ask for at least Ingram and Kuzma or one of each and some draft picks, right? Mm -hmm. And he's, it's a huge contract too, right? He's three years, uh, it's like 20 plus, the mid-20s. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's better suitor out there. Um, he is, and it's also gonna, because um, they're looking to the future too, right? In the summer, uh, for a max contract for like KD or something like that, right? But if you have him, it's gonna jeopardize that situation as well. So mm -hmm. is Bradley Beal really the way to do it? Um, I don't know, maybe better fit going down the future. Yeah, yeah could, he, could, he, could he be that game changer for the Lakers if, they, if needed? Uh, I'm indifferent about this one, but at the same time, LeBron's not getting any younger, so I mean, if he wants to contend now, I'm not sure if Bradley Beal actually would move the needle at all. Or mm -hmm. I mean, it will help, I mean, because he can create his own shot, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. But he, they're not going to be able to contend against the Warriors. Mm -hmm. So if I were them, I'd probably wait for you know, a free agency and hopefully maybe KD or AD would uh, sign with yeah. them, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to add too, it's only 20 games into the season, right? There's a lot can change, right? Yeah. But I think one thing that probably may not change for them, it's just the personal that they have in terms of what they're capable of at this point. Uh, we all know that Lonzo, in terms of what he can do, we know that he he is a just a point, a point guard in terms of how he plays, and shooting is not his forte. Same as Ingram. Uh, Ingram's game is, uh, a lot of their games doesn't really uh, bode well with what LeBron James is good at. I mean, he tried to play off the ball so then they can kind of handle the ball. But it's not working for them. It's just not their. He's not his. He's not at his best mm -hmm. when he's just off the ball. He's the best when everything revolves around him. Just because that's how good he is as a player, mm -hmm. LeBron. So I feel like for them, he he only has a certain window where he is at his peak at his prime. If they're really gonna go for it, the same thing as what the Raptors said. Why not take that risk? Why not take that leap? You don't ever want to be uh, just a mediocre kind of team in the NBA. You always want to go for it. And I feel like. Beal has that capability in terms of being that second player that's not gonna kind of clash with LeBron's game, but it's actually gonna complement him. So for me, if you're if you're a Lakers and and you want to contend or you want to be in that talk in the NBA, you always want to try to go for kind of the kill or go for something that there's an opportunity with, because I don't think LeBron, I don't think KD would want to join with a team that you know for him legacy wise, he already had to join a Warriors team that he could possibly win a championship this season. For him to fix this kind of legacy, leaving a team to join a seven and two in team, for him he's not gonna probably go back to play with LeBron. He's probably gonna go somewhere where he could try to win the championship and bring like kind of like a New York or maybe Washington. So he's probably looking at that. And with AD, I, I think for him he's looking to see if he can uh, continue with the Pelicans or join a team that can kind of work well with him, but not so much so with LeBron. I think for LeBron has so much, so many windows left in in his years at his peak. You have to go for it. Like Bradley Beal has that kind of capability to shoot, to make his own shot, and he doesn't need the ball in his hands. So that's perfect in terms of what LeBron needs as a two, as a second player to kind of help him. And I don't think anyone in right now in in Lakers can do that. And what Bradley Beal does. I mean, they, so they could they could gamble gamble for that trade. So who could they trade for? Or they can continue that two-year plan. What Magic Johnson did say, you know, a few months ago or a year ago about 
you know, the, maybe not this year we'll contend, but we'll try to work our way up there. And maybe next year, we, when we, because we do have LeBron James for four years as a four-year plan essentially, and now we could probably get you know Anthony Davis or maybe Kevin Durant off the free agent market. So, would you, like, yeah. do you think do you think that 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 could be an ideal situation or like? Who, who could be given up for Bradley Beal, basically, on, on the Lakers? Well, they signed a lot of free agents this year, so they couldn't really move anyone until December, mid-December anyways. Um, I would say, like, because Lakers are really high on Brandon Ingram, right? But I don't think he's, he hasn't proven that he's that good yet because he only scored over 26 points one time since high school. So, like, they're still waiting for him. But, like, if you give him up, like, if you really want to make the trade, um, I would say Ingram and maybe Hart and a draft pick. Mm -hmm. That that would be sufficient, I think. Okay, yeah, okay. especially with this contract. I'd say yeah, I'd, I'd say trade Lonzo yeah. and Ingram, but just because the way Jace, uh, uh, Josh Hart, the way Kuzma plays, fits yeah. exactly to what yeah. LeBron does as a strength. He needs someone that can uh, defend, shoot, and score without the basketball in hand because LeBron's going to take care of you. He's going to set you up. I think yeah. that's a perfect lineup if they get LeBron with Josh Hart with Kuzma and, and, Bradley and Bradley Beal with JaVale McGee at the center. That's a warrior type of lineup right there. That's how yeah. they set up their the team. Surround yourself with shooters, right? Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as we're going to stick with the Western Conference, you know, as, as well, the Golden State Warriors have, have been having problems recently. Uh, I know there was a Draymond Green situation with Kevin Durant, but now Stephen Curry is still out with an injury and they haven't been playing well. So wh what, do you th what do you guys think about the whole situation between Stephen Curry's injury? Is this a problem now or, you know, this is just a part of the regular season. I mean, we'll, ha we'll have to wait for the playoffs until we see Golden State full strength again. Um, injuries happen and good thing right now, it's happening in November, not in May. So uh, it, it's, it, I, they shouldn't worry about Warriors, you know, as soon as Curry comes back, problems will be solved, right? I mean, he is the missing piece, and I think he is much more valuable than KD at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we could see that, right? All the percentage has dropped, uh, three-point percentage has dropped, and it's not the same without him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think um, they're still the favorite to win this year, um, if everyone's healthy. Um, but I feel like the team's gonna break up after this season. Um, mm -hmm. I think they know the writing's on the wall. They can't really keep everyone. Mm -hmm. So they kind of feel like with the drama, I think before that, it already manifested to the drama. It just doesn't happen in one play, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure in the back of their head, they already know like one of us is not going to be here next mm -hmm. year. Like, um, especially when DeMarcus Cousins on ice still, like when he comes back, um, they still have to figure out before playoff starts. I think once they get everything going, it's going to be hard to stop. Like, yeah. Five yeah. All Stars, right? Yeah, I think winning. I mean, losing and struggle brings the ugly side of of, of people or the, the ugly side of a team, and this is kind of just what is happening right now. They're losing. They don't have the momentum, so the ugly side I think started coming out, oozing out of them, they, which is the uncertainty. They definitely the look more vulnerable right now, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but mm -hmm. uh, it's still early in the season, so yeah, yeah we'll see. Exactly, and at the end of it all, winning winning cures everything. So once <laughs> does. once uh, Curry comes back this Saturday, once um, the markets have heard from news that he's coming back post Christmas, yeah, <laughs> winning's gonna take care of that. Oh man, I mean, because they know that. Uh, here is DeMar they're helping Demarcus get a big contract, and in return, uh, Demarcus helping them win a chip, yeah. and and for KD is trying to win a three peat, trying to kind of surpass LeBron as being the one that's, that won a three peat, whereas LeBron never had. So this is kind of them working with each other. Just of you know, mm -hmm. uh, we, they have their individual goals to kind of, uh, and they are working towards the same kind of goal, which is to win a championship. And then from here on, whatever happens, happens, right? Because they know. Curry is the face of this team, no matter. I think everybody understands now that Curry is the most important. Curry is the franchise of the Warriors. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not KD, it's not Clay, it's yeah, not Draymond. Yeah. So I think at this point, they understand how valuable Curry is, and they know that he's the one that they're going to focus on to try to surround him with whatever they can to, to win more games or win possibly Absolutely. more championships. Do, do you guys think that it was fair yeah. for the Lakers to suspend Draymond and not mm -hmm. KD or one or the other? Oh, if the war, a war is suspended, Warriors. I mean, they, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think it was a it was a very very controversial decision, um, especially when it comes to when you're suspending your own player within internal disagreements. Plus, he's not getting paid for that mm -hmm. one game. Yeah, yeah. He's getting a lot of money that's not getting paid for him. Like, yeah. I mean, he'll get a lot of money either way. So he's getting paid already. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's just him not being able to play a game that obviously an NBA player wants to play all mm -hmm. games. 
Um, but we, we still know the situation. We, we, we could never know unless maybe there's a documentary that comes out in the next few years. But it, it, it was a controversial decision. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not choosing sides because that, that suspension was- We don't know what was, happened behind closed doors as well. Yeah, right? yeah. I guess, it could, okay, I guess one, I, I guess, uh, yeah, it, it kind of does suck because he lost a lot of money. That's, that's my decision right there. And I feel like the, the, the Warriors front office understands how KD's personality is. <laughs> like everybody knows he's a sensitive kind of guy. He takes things personally. You've Burners seen his Twitter account. accounts. So I think with the front Burners. office uh, of the Warriors, they understand how he how he, he is as a person. So for them, you always you know they always want to take care of your best player or your superstars. Yeah. So yeah. for them, they understood that you know this is kind of just to show to KD that you know we do care about your feelings. We do care about your feelings getting you know you you being insulted, you uh, getting attacked personally by our players. So we, it's such to show them that you know they respect them mm -hmm. for who he is. We understand how you feel about certain things, so we're not just gonna let it pass. Even if it's one of our, you know, one of our guy all stars like Draymond, yeah. but, but it's on the like, expense you know. of Draymond Green, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just to teach him a lesson too. We all yeah. know like Draymond <laughs> doesn't know when he to stop. He's a weird him. guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's all we have. Thank you guys for coming. Thank yeah, you thank for you. sharing that. But stay tuned because when we come back, we're gonna talk about the Raptors.